When it comes to privileged information that God shares with us, you have to understand that every time God shares with you privileged information, it comes with an assignment. If we could stand for the reading of the word. Anybody in anticipation? Hallelujah. Me too. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this moment, this opportunity. We don't take it lightly, oh God. And recognizing, oh God, that Lord, time is this, this precious commodity. And once this moment is, is gone, it's, it's gone. It's a grain of sand in the hourglass. And so may we soak in and take in everything that this moment offers. This precious moment in your presence all together at the same time, hearing your word with one heart, with my, one mind, and one focus, and that is to hear from you and to grow closer to you, that we would go forth and make disciples. Father, help me to declare publicly what you've, given, what you've given me in our secret place. I pray that they are engaged, equipped, empowered, and encouraged by this word to do your will on this earth. Lord, I decrease as you increase. May they hear you through me. I am but a vessel. Have thine own way. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let us read today. The, the scripture for today is Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 12 in the New King James Version. And it reads this. It says, and the disciples came and they said, to him, they said to Jesus, why do you speak to them? Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know, watch this, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken away from him. You may be seated in his presence. That's right. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. If you're taking notes this morning, the word that the Lord wants to speak to us today is called privileged, privileged information privileged information. I had a wonderful time with you all last week as we, as we got into the word that the Lord was calling, who do you think you are? I pray that y'all were walking around all last week asking that question. Who do you think you are? And paying attention to the people who said that to you. Who do you think you are? Last week we discovered that that, it, 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 that question can come in two tones. You see, S Satan asked that question as a rhetorical, hoping that you don't have a response. He says it to you in an intimidating tone to kind of get you to shrink back and try to get you to, to, to be afraid to walk in everything that God has called you to be. And so he says it like, who do you think you are? And he tries to get away before you can come up with a response. But we know that even though it's a rhetorical question, it deserves a response. And we are called to respond according to who God has called us to be above and not beneath the head and not the tail, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, citizens of heaven. We are called to have him under our foot. And so he asked to intimidate you, hoping that you don't respond. We explored also that Satan is the only one asking that question to intimidate you out of the things of God. We recognize that Jesus also asks you this question in the spirit whenever he senses a flaw in our thinking, whenever we begin to operate in less than who we are called to be in him, who do you think you are? It doesn't have an intimidating tone, a bit of a confrontational tone, but not intimidating. He wants you to literally think about this. Who do you think you are? In, in, in other words, what do you have in your mind about who I called you to be? Who do you think you are? 
and we explored how, how Jesus had this very powerful moment with Peter right before he went to the cross. And he confronts Peter and he says to Peter, Peter, who do people say that I am? And, and Peter says, well, some people say you're Elisha. Some people say you're Elijah. Some people say you are. You're, and it goes on and on and on. And then, and then Jesus stops him and he says, yeah, Peter, but who do you say I am? And Peter knocks it out of the park. He says, you are, you are the anointed one, Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus rejoices in this moment. Why does Jesus rejoice in this moment? Because he's trying to show us that, that in this moment, Peter was going to be one of the pillars that would help build the New Testament church. And Jesus had to first make sure, if this brother doesn't know who I am, he won't ever know who he is. Who do you think you are? And so last week was really pretty much a setup for what God wants to, wants to speak to us today. I had to lay that groundwork. You had to first recognize that there are those questions that are, that, are, that are being asked you in the spirit. And you've got to know who Jesus is so that you know who you are, so that you know how to operate both on this earth and as it pertains to, to the kingdom. But, but now God wants to take it a little bit further. Now that you understand that or prayfully you understand that God wants to talk to us today about privileged information, privileged information. Listen, there are times in life where we are made privy to, to information that others simply don't have. You are made privy to information that other people, they, they, they simply don't have it. And I call this privileged information. It's information that you've been given for a specific purpose for a specific time. Information that other people don't have that's been given to you for a specific purpose for a specific time. It's privileged information. For, for example, your friend comes to you, your longtime friend, he comes to you and he says, hey man, guess what? Tonight's the night, I'm getting ready to pop the question, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to ask her to marry me and this is how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna set it up just like this and, and this is the beginning of my happily ever after but, but please don't tell anybody, I haven't told my mom, I haven't told my dad, I haven't told anybody, I'm just, I'm just letting you know because I just, wanna, I just wanted to let you know this. That right there is privileged information. No, nobody else knows that and it's a big deal. Nobody knows it but you. Privileged information is when your boss comes to you and they, and they tell you, listen, I'm getting ready to retire. Nobody knows this yet. I'm getting ready to retire and my position is getting ready to open up. So just wanted to let you know that Wink, wink, make sure you're on your P's and your Q's because the, the, the position is getting ready to open up. That's privileged information, information that's shared with you at a specific time for a specific purpose. These are, these are what I call privileged information. Listen, some things that are important to notice about privileged information are as follows. These are some key things to notice about privileged information. One, privileged information, it says something about who you are in, the pos in your position or your identity or your status. You see, you can't be a nobody and get privileged information. If you've got privileged information, it instantly says something about who you are about your identity or your status in that person's life or in that person's realm of influence or in that person's relationship with you. It lets you know it should be a cue to let you know just exactly where, where your position is and who you are in that moment. For example, in the armed forces, the more privileged information you receive and the sooner you receive the privileged information, it is a, a cue that speaks of your rank within the armed forces. You see, when you first enter into the, into the army or the, or the, mili or the uh, marines, they don't give you highly classified information right off the bat. That goes to those who are of super high rank. So when they get that privileged information, it speaks about their position. It speaks about their identity, and it speaks about their status. When somebody shares privileged information with you, it is a cue to who you are and your status or your position as it pertains to what they're sharing with you. Listen, boneheads don't typically get access to privileged information. Boneheads, foolish people, people that walk in folly nonstop, people that do a whole lot of this, they don't typically get privileged 
information because the sensitive and valuable information could be wasted in the ears of a foolish person. And so privileged information, when, when people come to you with privileged information, your boss or your wife or your friend, it says something about you, about how they feel about you and who they see you to be. Boneheads don't get privileged information. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. You see, when you are given privileged information, here's the other thing to notice about privileged information. When you get privileged information, it's because someone believes in you and they feel like you're trustworthy. This is why boneheads don't get privileged information. Because people have seen the track record and every time you get some, somebody tried to give you some privileged information and you went off the deep end with it. And so, and so when, you are, when you are given privileged information, it, it, it says that somebody believes in you. That somebody feels that you're trustworthy. You're able to be trusted with this information and they believe that you are going to do something with it. For example, a wife comes to her husband and she says, babe, I, 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 I don't even, I'm not even sure myself, but I, I think we're talking about pregnancy a lot today. I'm staying away from you. But your, but, your, but your wife, for example, she comes to you and she says, I don't even know myself. I'm not even sure myself. But babe, I, I think I might be pregnant. That's privileged. Now, fellas, don't run. That's privileged information. She's sharing this with you because of who you are in her life. She's sharing this with you because she believes in you and she trusts you with this privileged information. She trusts that you are going to do something with the privileged information she's sharing with you. She's sharing this with you. She's sharing this with you because she, she believes that you're going to pray. You are pregnant. You aren't pregnant. We're going to pray that God has his will. She's sharing this with you because she's, she's hoping that you provide the specific support needed. Listen, the support when, you're, when your wife is pregnant is different from the support when she's not pregnant. If you know that, fellas, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's a whole different kind of support. And so she's sharing this privileged information with you because she's trusting you to do something with the information provided. I'm trusting you to pray. To pray us through this thing. I'm trusting you to give me the support, the specific kind of support that I need in this moment. I'm, and I'm trusting you to encourage me through this as my body shifts and it changes and it gets ready for birthing. I'm trusting you to en encourage me through all of this. I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you to celebrate with me in this moment. I'm trusting you with privileged information. Somebody say privileged information. Now, Here's the thing about this. Now we're going to get into some stuff. There is a huge difference between receiving privileged information and being involved in gossip. There is a gigantic difference. Jesus Christ is not a gossip. At this moment, he's giving privileged information. There is a big difference between receiving privileged information and being involved in gossip. Can we talk about this for just a moment? Praise the Lord, we're going to anyway. Gossip can be defined as having information about the behavior or personal life of other people, often without the full truth revealed or even known. So go ahead and scroll through your mind. Okay, have I been gossiping? Have I been involved in gossip? Let's use that as the litmus test. That's the definition. That's the definition. Information about the behavior or personal life of other people, often without the full truth revealed or even known. Key point, other people, other people, other people. People really gossip about themselves. Doesn't make sense. It's often other people people. It's often other people. Now, now hear this. Gossip is what you get when the enemy manipulates somebody who has ill intentions and they're armed with information that can attract an itching ear. It's important that we get this this morning. It's what you get when the enemy manipulates somebody who has ill intentions and they're armed with information that can attract an itching ear, but is unconfirmed and lacks 
validity. This is, this is what you get. Somebody who, who may have been given privileged information, it turns from privileged information to, to gossip when the enemy gets in the middle and he manipulates that person and he, and he gets them to, 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 to act on their ill intentions and they start to, to spread it and they start to spread it. It goes from privileged information to, to, to gossip. Listen, one of the most underrated methods of attack and snares of the enemy, both in the body of Christ and, as, and, and in the world as a whole for the saved and the unsaved alike is gossip. Please do not underestimate the damage that gossip can do in your family, in your friendships, in your community, in your church. Gossip, I believe that the enemy is just sneaking in. We're, we're looking for him and doing all these other big things and we're kind of holding, holding down the fort concerning that. But a lot of times he's getting into the back door or getting into the back door of your marriage, getting into the back door of your finances and he's using gossip to do it. And so we don't want to underestimate the effects that gossip has. And it's really, it's really tricky because it can be a slippery slope when determining when or if you are involved in gossip. I'm, I'm not very confident that as believers we're paying enough attention to the strategy combat, and, and, and combating the enemy's attempts to use gossip to divide and conquer. I've seen gossip destroy families. I've seen gossip destroy marriages. I've seen gossip destroy lifelong, lifelong friendships. I've seen gossip split churches. I've seen gossip make the workplace environment uninhabitable. Can't be there. Can't, I'll give up the check. I can't do this. This is just too much. I've seen it poison what were once healthy environments, all while it moves everyone participating out of position to receive certain kind of blessings. Don't you know that God will withhold a blessing from you if you're doing a whole lot of this? That when you, when you gossip, if God is pouring out a blessing over here, when you start and you've been given privileged information or you have some unconfirmed truths and you go and you start, here's a telltale sign that somebody's gossiping when they do this before they say it. If somebody comes to you and they do this first, <laughs> gossip getting ready to come out of their mouth. I guarantee, test me on this. You'll see. If they come to you and they do that, it's a telltale sign that they are getting ready to spew some gossip. I, that this is the reality. Someone can be entrusted with privileged information, but what they decide to do with it is the difference between it becoming privileged information and gossip. Please understand, privileged information can turn into gossip in the wrong hands. This is why boneheads don't get privileged information. Are y'all with me this morning? One of the tricky things about gossip is that sometimes only the intentions hidden in the heart of the sharer and the receiver can determine whether, it's, whether or not it's truly gossip. And so, and so the reality is this, that's the tricky thing about it. The, only the intentions that are hidden in the heart of the sharer and the receiver can determine whether or not it, it's gossip. So, the, so, so determining whether it's gossip, is, it shows in the intention of the person that's sharing or hearing the gossip. Any, anytime someone is sharing info with you about someone else, you have to always ask yourself and ask them, why are they sharing this with me? Even, even if they come to you like this first, ask yourself before they open their mouths, why are they sharing this with me? What have they done with the information up to this point? And what are they asking of me by sharing this information? I'm telling you, oftentimes, if the answer to those questions is not any good, I encourage you, I implore you to move, remove yourself from the situation. Because if you don't remove yourself from the situation where you were once right underneath the very blessings of God, now you have shifted and moved away into this poisonous environment. The blessings of God are still pouring out, but you're over here listening to nonsense. I encourage you to walk away, cut it off right where it stands. No need to participate in any of that nonsense. Ask yourself, why are they sharing this with me? And then pay attention to their tone, their facial expressions when they're sharing. You know that it's gossip when the person comes to you and it's not good news, but they seem excited. 
it's not good news that they're sharing, but they come to you and there seems to be an excitement in their voice. And instead of their, instead of their, their, their voice being solemn or their facial expression seeming serious, and like this is a serious moment, their face is lit up like they just got something for Christmas. It's a telltale sign that you're getting involved in gossip, facial, facial expressions, the tone of their voice, their excitement level. Watch all of those things as they share. Those are dead giveaways. And of course, the telltale giveaway, the look to both sides. And when they say, you ain't hear this from me. If they start, you ain't hear this from me. Ah, just end it right there. Listen, you ain't hear this from me, but I don't want to hear it. Then I don't want to hear it at all. If I ain't hear it from you, I don't want to hear it. It's a telltale sign. Another key to determining the difference between whether or not you're involved in gossip or simply receiving privileged information is what the sharer wants you to do with the information. And what have they themselves done with the information up to this point besides sharing with everyone else? Are y'all hearing me this morning? This is stuff I need y'all to walk away with and, and doing. This is a telltale sign. What, what do they want you to do with this information? Ask yourself that question. Ask them that question. Okay, you just shared that with me. What do you want me to do with that? And that puts them on edge. They might say, well, don't tell, just don't tell nobody. Just, just keep that to yourself. Well, why are you sharing that with me? <laughs> you don't want me to do anything with it. Privileged information, and we're going to get to that in a second. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But ask yourself that question. What do they want you to do with the information, and what have they done with the information up to this point? Are they asking you to pray? Are they asking you to, and now you got to be careful with some Christians too, though, because some Christians, you know, they'll come to you and do this here, and then they'll share, and then they'll say, but just pray about it. <laughs> you laugh, but you know it's true. So you, can, you can't quite tell if you've been involved in gossip or not, because they try to, they try to put it under the umbrella of, well, pray about it. This is why I say the enemy comes through the back door sometimes. You don't want them to pray about it. You just wanted to share. Are they, are they trying to confirm the truth by sharing with you? Maybe they think that you have some information and they're trying to confirm some things because they're concerned. Find that out. Are they only focusing on all the juicy details? That's another telltale sign if you're involved in gossip. They're sharing the, the story, but when they get to the, to, the, to the real hard or the difficult part of it, they just they, they hone in on all the juicy details. And that's the only part that they talk about that lets you know if they're being involved in, in gossip. Do they want to bring someone down so that they can feel better? Gossipers hate when other people excel. They cannot stand when somebody is moving forward in the things of God, in the workplace. They can't stand when others excel. Do they want to organize a healthy confrontation? Don't tell anyone I, I told you, but no not going to be involved in that. Don't make the mistake of thinking that just because info is accurate that it's not gossip when you share it. Don't make the mistake of thinking that, that though the information may be accurate, that it's not gossip when you share it. Again, ask yourself the question, why have I been given this information? What am I called to do with the information I've been, I've been given? Don't make the mistake of thinking, well, it's the truth. And that's what gospelers will always say. Well, it's the truth. Why are you mad at me? Yeah, it's the truth. But the way you went about it and the intentions in which you went about it proves that you are a gossiping bonehead. <laughs> I cannot tell it the way it is. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28. Let's get to some scripture, and then we're going to get to some kingdom stuff. Proverbs 16, 28. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. Proverbs eleven, thirteen. 13. It says, a gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. Remember, we said that someone gives you privileged information because they're confident that you'll do something with it, but a gossip betrays that confidence. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20. Without 
wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, quarrel dies down. If you're seeing a whole lot of chaos and confusion, maybe it's not in your exact home, in your immediate family. Maybe it's in your surrounding family. And every time y'all get together, it just seems like a fight breaks out or somebody starts yelling or cussing out each other or all kind of nonsense is happening. Maybe that's happening in, in, the, in your circle of friends. Maybe it's happening in your workplace. I guarantee you, every time there is a fire, there is a gossip behind the scenes, talking nonsense sense, walking around, looking both ways, telling everybody, you didn't hear this from me, but it happens all the time. Find the gossip and confront them. I didn't say fight them, kick them upside the head and scratch them. I didn't say all of that. I just said, I'm telling you to notice that somewhere in the midst, there is a gossip that is causing division and strife. And this is why Proverbs 26, 20 says, without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. You get to the point where you realize, wait a minute, what are we even fighting about? Because the gossip has been, has been exposed. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20 through 22. Well, I just read that. I'm sorry. Without wood, a fire goes out. Let's keep moving. Listen, God is not a gossip. He doesn't do any of the things that we just shared. He doesn't come to you and he doesn't say, you didn't hear this from me, but." He'll say, thus saith the Lord. But he doesn't say, you didn't hear this from me. And, and he doesn't do all those things. He doesn't get excited about the juicy details. In fact, it grieves him. He doesn't, he doesn't pounce on the juicy details. And he doesn't share with everyone just for the point of sharing. My, my God is not, a, is not a gossip. In fact, when he shares with us, the, it, what he shares with us is unchanging truth. And he shares them with his children for specific reasons. For, uh, for speci somebody say, he shares with me for specific reasons. Somebody asks, well, what are those specific reasons? Well, let me tell you. When it comes to privileged information that God shares with us. You have to understand that every time God shares with you privileged information, it comes with an assignment. This is how you know the difference between a gossip and somebody giving you privileged information because the gossip has no assignment linked to what they're sharing with you. They're sharing with you out of sheer entertainment and hoping that you get as much joy out of getting all of this juicy information as they did. That's why they want to say, you didn't hear this from me, and they don't have an attachment, they don't have an assignment attached to what they shared. But every time God shares with us privileged information, it comes with an assignment attached. Every single time, there's always a righteous assignment linked to it, and he's trusting you with the assignment. Remember, in the beginning, we said you receive privileged information because somebody, it, it speaks to your, your status. It speaks to who you are when somebody shares that privileged information. And, they, and they're also trusting you with the information. Why are they trusting you with the information? Because they want you to do something with it. Do something with it. And God is saying every time I give you privileged information, there is an assignment linked to it. And I'm trusting you with this assignment. I'm trusting you with it. God doesn't reveal things to you just to hear himself talk. He reveals to engage, to equip, to empower you. And to encourage you to take the information, the understanding, and the revelation and move in your assignment. And I can guarantee you this. The assignment is never going to be go and tell somebody, but don't tell them I told you. Or you ain't hear this from me. That's not going to be the, the assignment. This is what drives me absolutely you want to know what drives your pastor bonkers here's what drives me absolutely nuts people that sit and i know this is none of y'all in this room this is cer certainly not anybody in this room but people who receive the word and and, and y'all have to understand the toiling 
and, and the pressing in and the studying and the time away from society to get a word, to hear from God, to hear from heaven, to make sense of scripture that's difficult for everyone to understand and to make it easily understandable for you to get and to walk in. And after all of that, you come into the house of the God, not you specifically, but I'm talking about the church as a whole. And you, you, you hear the word of God and then you receive it and you clap and you rejoice and you walk up out of the church and you get beat up by Satan all over again because you're not applying what the word of God said. With every word that you hear, I can speak for Church on the Rock personally, for every word that comes from this pulpit, there is an assignment linked to what you've heard. Never are you going gonna, gonna to get a word that is just to, to itch your itching ear. And to make you feel good and, and run around the sanctuary and go home still being attacked by the enemy in the same way and still losing. There is an assignment link to every word that you receive. Why? Because you're being given privileged information. It drives me nuts when I suspect that somebody's been a hearer of the word. Hearer of the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. And you never do. You never do it. You never do it. You're still losing in your marriage. You're still losing in your finances. You're still losing in the workplace. You're still not growing in the spirit because you're not actually applying. You know one of the first questions I ask marriage couples when we get together or someone who is looking to get married or someone who's struggling in finances or somebody who's struggling in the spirit, have you done what we talked about at our last meeting? If you've only had one meeting with me and we didn't reschedule another meeting, it's because when I asked you that question, you said, no, I didn't do that yet. Because you're not attaching or you're not walking into the assignment that was linked with the privileged information given to you. And so until you do that, you're not ready for the next level. Be more than hearers of the word of God. Be ye doers also. Every time you receive privileged information, it comes with an assignment. Somebody say it comes with an assignment. Now, why else does he share privileged information with us? Yes, because he's trusting us with this privileged information, and this privileged information comes with an assignment, but he's also sharing with us because we ourselves are privileged. We receive privileged information because we're privileged. Anytime somebody comes to you, not with gossip, but they come to you with privileged information, you are privileged to receive that information. If your brother comes to you and he says, man, I'm thinking about getting married. Don't tell anybody, but I'm sharing this with you because I trust you and I trust you with the assignment that is linked to this privileged information. They're saying this to you because they trust you, they love you, and they hold you in high regard. When God shares with us privileged information, information what he's trying to also show us that you yourself child of God you're not a bonehead you're not what the world says about you you are not to be trampled over underfoot you're not a pushover you're not a nobody you are a privileged child of God anytime you hear from the word of the Lord he's sharing it to you because you're privileged now I know in today's climate that word privilege can have a negative connotation that word privilege kind of, kind of rings with a negative connotation. But that is, that is just the, the reality. That's, that's what it is. He shares with us because we are privileged. Whether you believe there is such a thing as white privilege or not. I don't know where you stand on that. But whether you believe there's such a thing as white privilege or not, whenever I personally, and I'm speaking for me myself, whenever I personally see an injustice and I think to myself, hmm... Now, if that were me, how would that turn out? Whenever I see something that I perceive to possibly be white privilege, I come to a place where I say, yeah, that's an injustice. And I don't dislike my white brothers and sisters because of the system that maybe we're living in. But in that moment, instead of getting all tied in and making a long two-page Facebook post and Twitter post about all of that, instead I focus on the fact that I myself am privileged. I'm not going to worry about being privileged on this earth because everything we see will someday, it's going to pass away. 
And so when I get to this place where I'm saying, oh, man, I don't have that happened to me. That wouldn't happen. if this. And I'm not saying that those things don't matter. I'm not saying that those things aren't frustrated. But when I start to try to get tied up and getting frustrated, God pulls me back over and he says, son, don't you even go there. Don't you even worry about that. But you're because you're privileged and, and, and everything that makes sense and everything that is worth being privileged on. When I get to that place, I realize, oh, my God, God shares with me because I'm privileged. He shares privileged information with me because I myself am privileged. Well, how are you privileged, Pastor Jason? I'm glad that you asked. I have direct access to the King of Glory through Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If that's not privilege, I don't know what is. Let's look at it in Scripture. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me that means i've got jesus as my lord and savior i can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy whenever i want i don't need an assignment i don't need to get penciled in to his schedule book i can just walk in whenever i want to not because i'm bad not because i'm all that but because i am a child of the most high god and because i am privileged I'm privileged. I receive information because I'm privileged. Well, how else are you privileged, Pastor Jason? I need more proof. I have favor with the God of the universe. The God of the entire universe. I have favor with in Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. It says, for his anger lasts only for a moment. Not that he doesn't get angry. But his anger lasts only for a moment. But his favor, what? Lasts a lifetime. His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. I have favor. I have favor with the God of the universe. Listen, I have access and understanding of information that boggles the minds of Earth's most esteemed scientists, researchers, and brilliant minds. I have information that boggles the minds of those that are most brilliant on this planet. And if I shared it with them, and I sat down and I conversed with them over a cup of coffee, they just simply wouldn't be able to comprehend the complexities of what I'm sharing with them in that moment as it pertains to things in the kingdom. They just can't understand. It blows their mind. Even the most brilliant scientists can't understand. I have access to that information. Why? Because I am. I'm privileged. I have resurrection power surging through me at this very moment. I have resurrection power surging through me as a result of the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Look at me crazy if you want to. When the time comes and it's God's will and I'm fasted and I'm prayed up and I've shown myself approved in the study of his word, you better believe there are going to be some bodies that are going to be raised. Why? Because God told me so. And he shared privileged information. Oh, I can't get but three witnesses. Listen, listen, John chapter 14, verse 12. Because y'all don't believe me, maybe you'll believe the word. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do works I have been and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. It's not because that I'm this, that, or the other, or you're this, that, and the other. You are privileged to receive the indwelling of his very Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that gave Jesus the strength and the ability to conquer the grave and death itself and close the gap of sin for all of mankind that we wouldn't die and exist in an eternal hell. That same power lives in you. That same power lives in all of those who believe believe child of God you better recognize if you started believing the lies of this world you are privileged you receive privileged information because you're privileged as children of God we're privileged where it matters the earth and everything in it it's going to pass away but where my privilege lies is eternal and so my favor won't fade. It's not ever. It's not ever going to fade. It doesn't run out. It's not like, okay, but well, that was your season of favor. I, I can't stand when people, I've heard preachers say, this is your season of favor. 
It's always your season. <laughs> you ever not be in either winter, spring, fall, or summer? You ever be in some season in between? It's always a season. God is always moving. He's always, we're going to be talking, that's confirmation. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks. I'm calling it Seasons Reloaded. We got to talk about that again. But it's always your season, child of God. Why? Because you're privileged. You're privileged. I'm wrapping up. God gives us privileged information because he trusts and believes in the righteous and the redeemed children of God to follow the leading of his Holy Spirit to seek and receive understanding and then walk out and accomplish their God-given assignment. He believes that as we receive the impartation of the Holy Ghost and we follow his moment-by-moment -moment leading, even when it doesn't make sense, even when you feel like I've been there and I've done that, but if we follow his moment-by-moment -moment direction, he believes, okay, I can trust this precious child of God with this privileged information. And they're going to follow me to see that the assignment is accomplished. He is trusting you with privileged information that has an assignment linked to it. And this, this is why Jesus spoke in the parables. Jesus explained it, explained it this way in Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. This is our opening scripture. He said this. Then the disciples came to him, and they asked, Jesus, why do you, why do you speak in parables? And Jesus, Jesus replied to them, and he said, to you it has been granted to know To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. But to them it has not been granted. In other words, everybody is not getting this. This is privileged. For whoever, we're reading it from the Amplified, for whoever has, that is spiritual wisdom, because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given. And he will be richly and abundantly supplied. In other words, he has favor that won't fade. She has favor that won't fade. And they're privileged where it matters. But whoever does not have, that is spiritual wisdom, because he has devalued the word of God, even what he has will be taken away from him. People see, though they don't see. People hear, though they do not hear. In other words, you devalue the word of God. And so as a result, Jesus says, I'm going to speak to you in parables because the Holy Spirit abiding in you and your desire to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God is going to lead you to understanding of privileged information. I don't care what the world has said to you. I don't care how well they put it together how well they put their technology together and what they, how they put it in the Broadway shows or primetime on NBC, ABC, Fox, don't matter. But the world has this, this weird way of providing you with entertainment and making you feel small at the same time. But you can only sense that in the spirit. They have a good way of making you feel that you're less than. And today, God is confronting you. I have made known to you the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And it's not because you're a nobody. You're not, maybe, you're not what mom said about you. Or not what mom, you heard mom over say about you. You're not what dad never said to you. You're not what your boss said. You're not what you read in the magazine. 
and who they suggest you're supposed to look like and talk like. And if you don't look like this or talk like this, then you ain't nobody. I'm standing against all of that nonsense right now. That's just the enemy just gossiping, trying to destroy you because he hates when people excel. I'm telling you right now. I don't care how the world presents it and how well they do. You are a privileged a privileged child of God and he wants to make known to you the mysteries of the kingdom if you would just value his word seek his face humble yourself turn from any ways of error turn from wickedness you find yourself in his presence and all the blessings that he has for you he'll heal your land but he'll do more than heal your land your mind your body your spirit your soul somebody say i'm privileged if that's not a reason to rejoice i don't know Lord, I gave it my best. If that's not a reason to rejoice, when you recognize, even in the midst of all of this chaos and craziness that is happening around me, it doesn't matter because I'm privileged where it matters. I'm privileged as it pertains to the kingdom that's everlasting, a kingdom that will not pass away. I am privileged. I'm privileged. Oh, you need to say it again. I'm privileged. I'm privileged. Scott, find somebody and say, I'm privileged. Find somebody in the back of the room, in the front of the room. Point to them and say, I'm privileged. I'm privileged. I'm privileged. I'm privileged. Come on at home. You need to just say that to yourself right now. It doesn't matter what they said about me, how they tried to make me feel, how they tried to destroy me. The reality is I'm privileged and I have the opportunity today and the day is moving forward, God willing, to receive privileged information. I pray that y'all got something from this today. Stand at your feet. Stand at your feet. Let's pray. I wanted to. I wanted to encourage them, Father. I wanted to engage them, Lord. In the midst of all the craziness and the busyness of life, I, my desire was to engage them in your word that, that in this moment it would seem like nothing else matters, oh God. I know I can't do that without you. Pray that they were equipped by this word to move forward into this world. Equipped with what? With privileged information, oh God, that has an assignment linked to it. May every time we read your word, oh God, may we say to ourselves, okay, Lord, why are you sharing this with me? Why are you sharing this with me? And God, we recognize that your response is always because I have an assignment for you. Go ye therefore and tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ and all the nations and make disciples. You are privileged, receiving privileged information with an assignment to make disciples and don't worry about what you will say for I'm with you even until the end of the age my precious son my precious daughter God says you are privileged so father we thank you for this moment that we've had together we thank you, God, that we can leave this place knowing full well, regardless of what injustices take place, regardless of what the world says, regardless of what the magazine says, Lord, we are privileged where it matters. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, other, doesn't matter. We are all privileged children of God with the opportunity to receive the mysteries of the kingdom for all of those who hear. We thank you and we honor you. Maybe you're here today, you're watching or you're watching online. And today you're saying, oh my goodness, I never, no one ever told me I was privileged before. Well, you're not privileged until you receive Jesus. You're only privileged because of who you are in and through him. And so without him, I, I hate to tell you, you're, you're a whole lot less than privileged. In fact, I got to tell you this because I love you. But without him, you are on your way to eternal hell fire. 
hell is real. Somebody say, hell is real. I don't want that for you, but forget me, Jesus doesn't want that for you. So if you're here today or you're there online and you're watching, I just want to give you the opportunity to be grafted into the favor, to walk in the favor, to embrace the favor of God through the salvation of Jesus Christ. You have an opportunity to turn away from your wicked ways and receive forgiveness through repentance and to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, if you're here in this house right now, just wave your hand at me and say, man, I need Jesus in my life. If that's you, just wave at me. Say, you're talking to me. You're talking to me. You're talking to me. Amen. Well, maybe it's you at home. If that's you at home, I'm looking right into the camera. If that's you at home, I just want you to pray with me. And here in this house, we all going to pray the same thing because none of us are perfect. But we continue to cling to a perfect God. And we're with you. So right where you are, just pray with me. Say, Father, here I am. Lord, all my life, I've been made to believe that I was less than. I believe the lies of this world and all that this world has said about me. But in this moment, I'm not going to let that result in a sinful life. I'm not going to do those things that are pleasing to my flesh, but I know that you are not pleased with. Lord, today, I realize that you enabled me, my sinful self, to receive privileged information. And you're trusting me with the assignment linked to that privileged information. And for right now, for me, that assignment is to receive you as Lord and Savior and to turn from my wicked ways in a life of sin and run to your righteous, outstretched hand. Lord, I believe that you suffered, that you died and were buried. And on the third day, you rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures and ascended into heaven and have given me the gift of your Holy Spirit to abide in me, to lead me, to guide me, to change me, to fix me, to reveal to me privileged information and the understanding thereof. Fill me now from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Lord, on this day, you are mine. And finally, I am yours. Come on, somebody. Come on with your privileged self. With your privileged self, somebody behind that face mask, just shout hallelujah. Come on at home, just shout hallelujah. God bless you, my family. I can't wait to see you all next week, God willing. Until I see you again, love God, love yourself, love each other, and go forward in the things of God. Love you.